So we're working on the uh, GDAX um, app. Um, so let me just run what we have on here. I want to show you. So um, this is what we did last time. All it is is just showing the live data. Um, it's using a, a web socket, a secure web socket, uh, which takes a little bit of extra um, coding to con get connected to a secure web socket on Android. All right, so what we're really going to look at today is trying to get this history. So we have live just the price in our app, um, but we don't have any of the previous data. Um, so it's not drawing any uh, chart or anything like that. And so the first thing really is to just get that data. And there's in the API reference, uh, they have uh, their URL to get uh, JSON data uh, for price history. Um, it's not trades, it's actually candles right here. So it's using api.gdex.com slash products slash Bitcoin USD and then candles. Uh, granularity is an extra uh, thing uh, to choose to choose like uh, between 15 minute, an hour, six hours, or a day. Um, so we're actually not gonna use that yet. We're just gonna do the plain candles. And I think this is, see I'm not exactly sure um, what time frame this is, but we're gonna figure that out. When we're working, looking at this data, it's just a simple JSON array and each each entry in the array um, has this data right here. It has the time, it has the low, it has the high, it has open, close, and volume. You know, you have like the time up here. Uh, the start, let's go to one minute so I can look at it more. So the starting point would be like for example on this candle, well let's go to one like this. The starting point would be right here. So that would be open right here. Uh, we have the low. The low is, is down here. The high is down here. And then the closing is right here. Uh, so that's when it closes and it goes to the next candle. And so that's what that data is. I'm thinking we should start a new class uh, for JSON parsing, well not JSON parsing, but for downloading and then getting the, it as a JSON object. This is a different project and in this project I have a JSON parser um, class and you know I might even just copy this whole class. Um, it makes the connection it reads the input stream, pending each line. It's creating a JSON object out of it. We're gonna just copy this. And um, I can leave this in the description. I'll have the GitHub updated for this. So uh, what we're doing here, I'm just gonna copy that and paste it into here calling it JSON parser. So sorry about that, we didn't have to create this class, JSON helper. Just gonna use this JSON parser. So we have a method that will download the JSON uh, from the URL. And I guess we can do this in the main activity. Now when we're working with network stuff, um, we always need to do a thread. Um, because you don't want a network thread running on the main thread or else it will crash the app or it will have an exception because you're not supposed to run it on the UI thread uh, but yeah because that would just pause the UI so in our on create we already have an in init web socket um, I'm going to create another method public void let's say get history 
and this will be the method that gets the GDAX price history. So let's call get history. Um, so we're going to have a thread, right? And we're also going to want to pass the URL into that thread. And for that reason, we'll make a custom runnable. We're going to do class history runner. And let's do the naming conventions. History runner implements runnable. And now, let's see, must. So it needs the run method. So it wants to add this, which when we're doing threads, we need that every time. And the reason we're doing the custom runner, the uh, run, custom runnable, is because we need a need a constructor so that we can input the URL string URL. Okay. And the history runner will have the string for the URL. And we'll say this dot URL equals URL. And now whenever we're running, we do the JSON parser dot make HTTP request and we'll pass in the URL. And this method should return a JSON object. So we're going to do JSON object o obj equals that. For logging purposes, let's do log.d log.d tag comma obj dot trying to think okay so let's just do two string make sure it works first and we're passing in the URL now when we're running the uh, to run the actual thread we'll do new thread we'll pass in the runnable uh, a new history runner we pass in the URL and for the URL, uh, we don't have a base URL for for that yet. So let's make a new new final string. We'll call this GDAX API URL. Get this URL. All right. So we're just gonna paste this in api.gdax.com we'll just keep it like that so for the git history we're gonna have string uh, history url we pass the url into the runner and we start this so that's the thread we're starting here. Okay, so get history. And we pass in the GDAX API URL plus. All right, so now we just get this part. And to make it more dynamic for later, um, we should have a product uh, string that we could just use here. So string product string. And for now, we're going to have the product string just set to BTC USD. So we can just paste that in there. And then and then we can make this will be more dynamic now by concatenating it. And I want to do the same thing with the one down here, um, right here is our product string. So, so we need to keep those quotation marks. So 
So we go like this, go like that. All right, so we got that concatenated for the product string there. Should download the history and print it out. 100% sure, let's figure it out. Uh, first of all, let's start up a log cat. ADB log cat dash s and we call this our tag. Our tag is gdax right here. gdax. All right. So this output is just from the normal uh, from what we did last time. And I might pause that for now. So in the on message, I'm just going to comment this out so we can see our new log better. And I'm going to try to run this. All right, here it is. It's opening. Oh, it crashed. It's kind of a dumb mistake. This happens. So um, I was looking at the URL. I just decided to click on it. And it turns out the URL is wrong. So what what needs to change is it needs to slash product so gdx.api.com slash product slash that then the gdx api slash product string slash candle okay now this should work let's try it and I have my terminal. And let's see what it does. No! It did get this, at least. So it's getting data. It's just error parsing data. OK, so I think the reason it has that this error is just because this is a JSON array. It's not really a JSON object. Um, so in the JSON parser, let's just add. Oh, what was that? Oh, okay, semicolon. Um, we're just gonna copy this, and we're gonna make a whole new one uh, that does JSON arrays. So we paste this. We do JSON array right here. Just making sure it's the right thing. And then instead of returning a JSON object, we're doing a JSON array. JSON array. There we go. And this will return our JSON object as an array. So make HTTP request. Well, let's rename these. We'll rename it to um, get JSON object from URL. And then the other one we'll do get JSON array from URL. So the main activity, instead of make HTTP, we'll get get JSON array from URL. Change this to a JSON array, and we'll try this. Let's try this. Hopefully, we'll give you getting the history now. Okay, it worked. Now one. Oh yeah. One thing to note. Um, is when you're doing logcat and you're doing log.d it, it, it limits the number of characters I, I, I spent so long on this once trying to figure out what was going on where it's cutting it off right here where it doesn't finish the full array but that's only just the log it actually is all in there 